Welcome to this course on transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. We will be talking about olefin polymerization uh, in today's lecture. We have uh, started this topic in the previous lecture where we had just given a brief introduction about olefin polymerization uh, reaction. Now, to begin with it is important to note that as far as the olefin is concerned their oligomerization as well as polymerization are both very important industrially in terms of large scale uh, uh, synthesis for various uh, applications. The ranging from uh, 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 anti knock uh, reagents uh, uh, to detergents uh, to even uh, 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 materials polymers for material applications. So, as far as the olefin is concerned they are both the processes uh, uh, oligomerization as well as polymerization are of substantial interest. Now, in this context uh, we have uh, discussed various forms of oligomerization reaction in the previous lectures and then uh, started uh, uh, moving on to olefin polymerization. Now, with regard to the olefin polymerization uh, what we have uh, learned that this uh, is a very big uh, scale industrial process where about 70 megaton of uh, polymers are produced annually. Uh, now, uh, these polymers that are produced annually using olefin polymerizations uh, are very diverse and require a detailed understanding of structure activity uh, uh, relationship uh, SAR structure activity relationship uh, in order to design a catalyst better suited for uh, uh, delivering polymers of uh, particular need and demand. Now, uh, the last thing which we had uh, discussed in the last lecture is also about this uh, mobility, uh, a segment mobility which is uh, uh, related to the extent of branching and cross linking uh, present in the polymer backbone uh, that sort of uh, uh, defines the type of material uh, that one uh, becomes. So, larger amount of segment mobility or branching uh, could uh, lead to a development of uh, softer polymer materials whereas, linear long chain uh, uh, polymers would uh, give rise to more uh, you know, brittle and hard uh, polymers. Now, in today's lecture uh, what we are going to uh, uh, take, uh, do first is to look at the various classifications that have been uh, reported for these uh, uh, olefin polymers and then uh, um, gradually a uh, a, a go over the types of uh, polymers that are known or have been um, uh, named based on their different properties and classified based on these properties and then slowly we will uh, move on to various kinds of ethylene based uh, polyolefin based uh, polymers and then to uh, poly, uh, polypropylene based poly polymers. Uh, and then uh, based on the classification and then we will look into the mechanism and examples related to this uh, 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 polymerization reaction. So, uh, to begin with uh, let me just uh, uh, talk about various kinds of uh, 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 classifications of polymers that uh, are uh, conventionally used. The first one is uh, thermoplastic materials. Plastic materials. Exhibit. shape stability under short term strain. However, However, upon warming the 
they are easily transformed into plastics. Uh, now, what is a plastic in uh, polymer uh, jargon? Plastic means easily shaped. That is, they can be changed uh, uh, to a shape of desire uh, uh, without much strain. So that means they can be deformed, and once deformed, this plastic material uh, sort of uh, retain the uh, final shape easily. That is. easily shaped or deformed. So, what does plastic mean that uh, plastic material are easily uh, deformed, easily changed to, uh, into another shape. Uh, so, that means that plastic material do not have much memory of their own. So, they cannot uh, come back to their original state after uh, uh, the de deforming force is released, whereas uh, uh, reverse of plastic material are elastic material. Elastic material are the material uh, which uh, 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 can be deformed easily. Uh, however, once the deforming force is taken off, elastic material has a memory and it comes back uh, to its original shape. So, difference between elastic and plastic. Uh, is that uh, plastic material has no memory. Uh, uh, however, elastic material material can easily deformed but has a memory. That means, when the uh, deforming force is taken away, an elastic material could uh, remember its original shape and gets back to it. Whereas, a plastic material uh, can also be uh, deformed easily. However, when the deforming force is uh, taken off, uh, it retains the uh, deformed shape. So, it has no memory. Uh, that means, it uh, does not go back to its original uh, 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 step. So, at higher temperature, these thermoplasts uh, are uh, plastic hmm. uh, and this change is uh, reversible. And this change is reversible. Thermoplastic, mat thermoplastic materials are built from linear or slightly bleached polymer. Uh, plastic materials are built from from linear or slightly branched polymer with low segment mobility. And uh, uh, so, uh, these are uh, uh, see, uh, uh, these uh, thermoplastic material uh, are not uh, uh, branched or uh, slightly branched or mostly linear. Uh, uh, so, they are uh, uh, segment mobility a, a is kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, not too much and usually are low and uh, for this material the working temperature uh, 
is lower than melting temperature that means, uh, uh, the crystalline part phase of it or lower than melting temperature or the glass transition temperature. That is the amorphous nature. Now, uh, at this point uh, uh, it is to be note, uh, noted that polymers uh, uh, are uh, large molecules and they are different uh, from uh, small molecule monomers. For example, for uh, uh, a small molecule uh, it is important that the small molecule will have a unique molecular weight uh, as well as a unique melting point. So, and often melting point is a method which is often used to characterize uh, 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 the purity of uh, small molecule uh, compounds by, uh, by looking at its melting point. If the melting point transition is sharp, uh, it is assumed that the uh, 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 compound is pure and also the melting point is characteristic of the compound. However, uh, these two properties that is the molecular weight which is unique to a uh, compound as well as the melting point also unique to a comp uh, small molecule compound are however different. Uh, when it comes to polymers. Now, one thing which is primary difference is polymer uh, 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 for a polymer uh, having uh, does not have a single molecular weight. Usually, the polymer produced have a range of molecular weight and they are usually uh, uh, given as a statistical distribution in terms of weight average molecular weight or the number average molecular weight. So, here is the first distinction between a polymer molecule and a, sm a small molecule uh, compound that a small molecule compound will have a, a unique characteristic melting point whereas, a polymer molecule will have a range of melting points and melting points may be differ, uh, different uh, uh, depending on how you measure them. Uh, one can one range of a melting point can arise from there a uh, weight average uh, molecular weight and the other range of melting point can uh, arise from their number average molecular weight. So, polymer has uh, uh, may have uh, many molecular weights at least two molecular weights. Sometimes they, if the measurement is done through density then the density average molecular weight. So, uh, there are uh, 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 not a, there is no unique molecular weight to polymer uh, uh, the way it is there for small molecule. Secondly, uh, the second difference is that the polymer chain uh, may have uh, regions which are crystalline in nature that means, the chains are all stacked up uh, in an ordered fashion whereas, uh, there may be regions where the polymer chains are random uh, and completely disoriented. Now, depending on this region the where the, the region in which the chains are very ordered and crystalline. Uh, uh, so, they, they show a transition a phase transition which is called uh, melting temperature and uh, the region uh, where uh, and this melting temperature is sharp for crystalline region as sharp uh, uh, phase transition whereas, uh, the region which is amorphous where the polymer chains are not oriented in any particular direction or more random and disoriented they do also show a particular transition and these are uh, these are not very sharp they are generally broad and these are called glass transition temperature. Uh, so, unlike uh, uh, a small molecule which can either be crystalline or amorphous in nature, polymer can be both, uh, polymer can have both crystalline domain as well as amorphous domain in it and polymer may exhibit two transition temperatures, one is melting temperature, the other is glass transition temperature. And uh, the third thing uh, is uh, the fact that the glass transition usually occurs at lower temperature than that of the uh, melting. Uh, temperature. So, these are some of the unique uh, uh, features or uh, attributes of polymers which distinguish uh, them from monomer. Now, uh, thermoplastic uh, 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 conditions for working uh, 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 for use of thermoplastic is that the working temperature 
uh, in this context it is to be noted that uh, the working temperature for thermoplastic material uh, is lower than both the melting temperature as well as the glass transition temperature of the uh, polymer. So, uh, we come to the, uh, the next uh, 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 classification uh, which is duraplastic materials. Uh, these duraplastic materials maintain their shape upon uh, extended period of strain. or at high temperatures. They uh, 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 and these uh, 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 the, these duraplastics are usually formed from pre polymers which are uh, what is a pre polymer? Pre polymer is uh, some naturally occurring polymer like rubber. Uh, and so on and so forth uh, 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 which uh, can, uh, are cross-linked or joined together uh, 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 through a cross-linking process called cutting and these are also known as thermosetting materials. They are formed from pre-polymers. like rubbers through through th uh, thermal cross linking Uh, uh, process uh, and this process uh, is uh, ir uh, irreversible. So, if we take uh, some pre polymers and hit them, uh, then they become uh, cross linked and they become duraplastic materials, and this process is usually irreversible. Uh, this uh, 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 cross linking of pre polymers to give duraplastic is usually an irreversible uh, process. For duroplastic also, for duroplastic materials, the segment mobility is low. is very low due to the presence of fine meshed cross linking covalent bonds. And because of this reason, duroplastics are often amorphous and rare, rarely crystalline. So, 
So, uh, 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 the first uh, we had seen thermoplastic material, then uh, we come across this duroplastic material, uh, they can ex uh, maintain their shape upon extended period of strain or at high temperatures. Uh, they usually are formed from pre-polymers through thermal cross-linking process. Uh, also, this duroplastic material has low segment mobility uh, due to the presence of uh, uh, fine mesh uh, cross-linking covalent bond. However, duroplastics are uh, rarely crystalline uh, 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 polymers. Next in this uh, uh, classification comes elastomers. Elastomers are applied above glass transition temperature and uh, they are deformed through applications of uh, force. They are deformed through applications of force. However, however, upon removal of stress, they return to the starting state. to the starting state state with maximum maximal conformation entropy. So, this is what uh, we just uh, discussed uh, that they uh, sort of have a memory. Uh, and so, uh, the difference between elastic nature and the plastic nature is that uh, like elast a plastic nature, elastic nat uh, materials are easily deformed through application of force. However, um, upon removal of the stress, they return back to the starting state with maximal conformational entropy as if uh, they have a, a memory of their initial shape and uh, they come back uh, to that shape uh, when it comes to uh, these elastomers. Elastomers are also are formed by cross-linking pre-polymers long chain pre-polymers and the degree of cross-linking is wide, wide meshed. is wide meshed. And so, what is the difference between elastomer 
and the uh, duroplast is that duroplast also are formed by uh, thermal cross linking of uh, pre polymers. However, in case of elastomers, this thermal cross linking of long, pre, uh, long chain pre polymers are done. And the other difference is for duroplast that this cross linking is fine uh, meshed, whereas uh, uh, the degree of cross linking is wide meshed in terms of elastomers. Another important uh, attribute of elastomers is that elastomers exhibit high segment mobility. Elastomers Elastomers exhibit high segment mobility that allows a parallel alignment alignment of building blocks under tensile strength stress. So, uh, 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 now uh, uh, the last uh, important uh, property or difference between elastomer and the duroplast is that duroplast has very low uh, uh, segment mobility on the contrast elastomers have very high segment mobility that allows a parallel alignment of building blocks under uh, tensile strength. So, with this uh, we come to conclusion of today's lecture. In today's lecture what we have uh, done is we have looked into uh, classification of uh, olefin uh, polymer, polymeric material uh, based on their properties. And uh, to begin with uh, we had uh, covered three different kind of uh, po uh, polymer classification. One is uh, the called thermoplastic material. Uh, these are the materials that exhibit uh, their shape under short uh, term uh, strain. Uh, upon higher temperature uh, they become plastic. Then we have looked at uh, duroplast, uh, duroplast materials maintain their shape upper, upon extended period of strain or at high temperature. And lastly, uh, uh, we looked at uh, our elastomers uh, uh, which uh, 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 operate uh, above glass transition temperature. These are easily deformed, but uh, upon removal of the uh, deformal uh, deforming stress they uh, go back to their original configuration uh, and retain uh, their shape. Uh, so, we had seen how these uh, uh, materials uh, uh, are uh, formed usually by uh, 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 forming cross linking be between uh, pre polymers uh, by heating and then we have also looked at how uh, finally, they are meshed in order to retain the uh, uh, retain the classification that it belong category it belong uh, that it belongs to. So, with this uh, I come to the end of today's discussion we are going to uh, talk more about uh, the classification of polymers before we look into uh, polyolefin and polypropylene uh, in terms of the synthesis and the mechanism. Uh, 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 so, uh, there is a lot of excitement uh, ahead uh, in this topic of olefin polymerization. So, with this I again thank you for being with me in this uh, lecture and I look forward to uh, discussing more on olefin polymerization when we met uh, next. Uh, till then uh, goodbye and th thank you. Mm -hmm.